Hello, everybody. Uh, I want to answer a question that used to keep me up at night. I don't know if it's real, but I know as a guitar player, this was something that bugged me for a long time, and I couldn't really figure out how to get a, get a good answer for it. And I don't think I'm the only one that's ever struggled uh, with, with this idea. And here it is. When you're playing lead, okay, if you're treating and this is for a lot of people as they're learning to play lead, maybe from then on forward, there's a question of, do you just play lead, you pick your notes from the key that the song is in, or as the chords change, should you play in each chord, play in that scale of that chord? So if you had A minor, F, G's your chord progression, should you just play A minor through the entire solo or song if you're playing lead or whatever the case may be, or do you play in A minor during the A minor chord and play in F major during the F major chord and G major during the G major chord? Well, um, <laughs> that is an excellent question. I'm glad you asked that. And here's what it kind of boils down to. Uh, yes and yes and no. <laughs> Neither and both. Um, to be more specific, let me tell you how I kind of got what, to me, felt like the most definitive answer I think I could come across for real. And uh, that is a while back when uh, I bought a keyboard because uh, I heard this one classical song and I was like, man, it'd be cool if I could play that classical. You know, you just walk into a room with a piano sometime. You know, this happens every now and then. I'd like to go sit down at the piano and then play that and act like I really knew what I was doing and get all into it and be all pretentious. To me, that just sounds like a great time. That's just a great time. That just fits right along with my personality. Walk in there and be all pretentious. Be like, here, check this out. And, you know, maybe lie about how, how much I mean, 40 years of training and all the finest, you know, just be completely full of it. But just still act like, okay, I'm, I'm way off track, way off track. Anyway, I bought a keyboard and uh, on a keyboard, you can play chords with one hand and play a little bit of lead fills or whatever, depending on how good you are, I never got very good, with the other hand. So, back to the question. So what I did was, uh, I tried, I experimented with playing, like say, let's, let's go back to our example, but I'm going to use two uh, chords that, you know, the A minor and the G, okay? If you play an A minor, and the notes of A minor are just all the notes without any sharps or flat, and then when you play your G chord, well then you have the question, oh, do I stay in A minor, just playing all the, like on the keyboard, all the white keys, or because I go to G major, G major has one black key on it, it has uh, F sharp. So that's the question. I think actually the uh, chord progression I was using was actually I was going from an A minor to an E minor, if I remember correctly. But anyway, point being, same scale. E minor is the same as G major, where it has F sharp. Other than that, it, it's the same as, as A minor. So really, in that case, because E minor is a chord of A minor, the two scales that I would be deciding over, oh my God, which one am I going to pick? Am I going to do A minor? During the G chord, am I going to do uh, G major during the G chord? If it's an E minor chord, do I swap over to... It's one note different. It's whether or not you play F or F sharp. That's it. It's one note different. It's not a big deal. And what you'll find is the more the chords that you're playing are actually connected to the key that you're in. Like, for instance, if you're playing A minor, F, and G, uh, those chords really go together well. And they're part... Because the notes are actually part of you know, A minor, so that, that's why it sounds so good. And um, the more that the chords you're playing are fitting in with the scale, then the less the scale would be different if you played a different scale during that chord. Uh, now, going back to the example of A minor to E minor and that F sharp, well, what I found, and and the reason I was able to fit, find it on a keyboard more is because on a, on a, playing it on a guitar, in most cases, you're going to you're gonna have it separated and you're going to be playing that E minor and that A minor on one guitar and then you're trying to compare which, you know, which scale would sound better on another guitar. And after a while, that's just so much kind of going on that, you, you know, it's hard, hard to say which one you thought was better. But when I had it on a keyboard and I just had it on a simple piano setting 
and I was just playing the chords with this hand, just three note chords, which once again simplifies as opposed to if I'm playing something with six notes on a guitar for the chord. And then I was able to hear it. Here's what I came up with. When I was on the E minor chord, it did sound better to use the F sharp, which just makes sense if you think about it, because while you're on that E minor chord, the F sharp is already going to be the note that sounds better with the E minor chord itself. And if you think about it, when you are got E minor, if I did just play the F that I would be playing with the A minor scale, then that's actually uh, only one fret. F is only one fret higher than E, so if you think about how those are going to sound together, you're going to get a lot of dissonance there. And because you, because anytime you just have a note like that E and an F playing at the same time, those are so close together that you, the ratios don't work out right. You know, they, it ends up getting dissonance there. So you are better off, if you can, uh, to play that F sharp, which, oddly enough, if you're playing an F sharp in, and this is not a coincidence, by the way, if you're playing that F sharp while you're, the song is in the key of A minor, then that's actually uh, just the Dorian mode. Because it's just that one note difference. So, I say that and act like, oh yes, like I'm like, but do, do I do that? No, not really on guitar. Because here's the thing, most of the time, the kind of music I play on guitar, uh, we're going to be changing the chords so fast that it doesn't really make too much sense to stop and start playing in a different key um, in the sense of changing my mind, like, oh, now I'm in E minor. You wouldn't do it like that. I really should just be focusing on, oh, whenever I aware that that chord's being played, if I happen to come across the F, take the F sharp instead. However, what you'll find is that, like I say, in that music moving fast enough, you're not, it's not going to stick out really. So what it boils down to is the faster you're moving, the more likely you are to just stay in A minor because you're going to be moving so fast that even if you hit, happen to hit that F sharp, remember, you got all the other notes. You, who says you got to be hitting that F or F sharp during the E minor chord anyway? But if you just happen to hit to that intersection, whether you're playing an F or an F sharp, even if you play the F, it ain't going to be that big a deal because you're moving so fast that your brain ain't going to have as much time to connect that E and that F that should be dissonant because they're just not sounding out together for long enough for it to really be a problem. But the more that the music slows down so that you play your A minor chord for a while, and then you stay on that E minor chord, the longer you stay on that E minor chord, the more it's going to sound off. And there eventually comes a point, the longer you stay on that E minor, eventually you're just, your ear kind of hears that now you're in E minor. And that F is going to sound really off because you're having time to actually sit there and digest it. So, uh, long answer was that. Short answer is, whichever fucking one you want. If you want to just stay in A minor, stay in damn A minor, and if, if the song slows down enough that it becomes a problem, then you deal with it. Uh, otherwise, like I say, if you want to change, key, you know, different, basically you're changing to the different modes as you go to the different chords when you do it that way, then so be it. Go for it. If you're, in fact, if you're good enough to do that, that's probably a better way of, of doing it. Like I say, my, I, <laughs> I just get a little too wild with it to uh, really think about that very often, which after making this video, I need to start thinking about that sometimes and, and trying to do that. Uh, but point being, it, like in anything, it just depends on what you want to hear. Uh, what sounds good to you? Is that, you know, what, what is it you want to play? One, the, the crazier the chords that you're going out of the way for and the more playing a scale that's different for that chord is going to make your playing get a little uh, or a lot more complex. So that's something to be a good direction uh, for anybody to head into. But as you're learning to play lead, if you're in the beginning stages, just, just stay in A minor. Just stay in A minor. <laughs> Worry about the other stuff later, but you're perfectly fine. And, uh, well, let's say up to this point, I, I don't think I've ever run into a situation uh, where I was like, oh man, I, if I just play A minor, it's going to suck the whole time. I have to swap different. It, it just, and let, like I say, in rock music, it's just probably not going to happen. You probably just stick with A minor. Hell! You'd probably be even better off just sticking with A minor pentatonic than even then. That's that just cuts down any. That way you're not even worried about playing the F or the F sharp. Uh, so another option. Or oh, wait a minute. Tommy 
waves flowing backward to a life without a care. Try to find a memory, but it wasn't there. Maybe it's something I don't know, maybe I don't care. Maybe it's something you should have grown, maybe you should share. 